Welcome back. Again, you're listening to Randy Barkley and Jeremiah Lee. I'm a certified financial planner, and Jeremiah is also a certified financial planner, as well as being an attorney. And we're talking about the election that just happened and kind of the results of it. We talked about the end, you know, the first part of the program, we talked about kind of the winners and the losers. Now we want to talk about maybe the financial implications, you know, what's what's projected going forward, what may or may not happen, and what the implications of that uh, potentially could be for your investment, so to yeah. speak. And I like this when we go into an election. I think we have a number of clients, you know, on each side that feel if this happens, we're right. doomed. You know, right. the, the sky is falling, we're doomed. And we get to a point like this where, you know, there's some winners, some losers. And now what? Well, we continue on. Right. And it'd be interesting to, as we talk through this, you know, what happens locally? Well, probably not a whole lot of difference. What happens nationally? Uh, potentially, this is meaningful. Right. You know, th- there wasn't a red wave, but there was a red tide. I don't know what you call it. You know, <laughs> there, there's enough that it looks like the the very likely that the Republicans will take control of the House, the U.S. House of Representatives. And with that, mm-hmm. they would be able to block a lot of things potentially that um, Biden and the Democrats may try to do. Right. And I think, you know, for example, the expansion of the debt, I mean, that's going to come up here sometime next year. The Republicans, you know, if they have enough strong enough opinion about <laughs> that, they could block that, which could be a real problem. Yep. That, that always causes the, the markets to roil when, yes. when they do that. Yes. And I feel like I struggle with that because I feel like both sides say, no, no, this is the one time we just need you to increase it. And the other side says, no, no, never. And then it, it increases regardless. Um, I think it's it's similar to for people. It's very easy to criticize how your friends or family members or neighbors right. spend their money. Right. Well, the way I spend my money is really great, <laughs> but they don't need a new car. I mean, I do, but they don't. You know, that, that's, that's It's very easy to criticize others. And I think it's, it's the same idea. When you see the budget come out, the party that's in power is trying to get it through. And, and it's in recent history, the party that's not the minority power the minority party is saying, hey, this is ridiculous. You can't do this. This is too much. Yeah. And I hope a lot of, and again, I, I don't I don't think this is something that will probably happen, but I would like to see that the Democratic Party would not just try to throw things out there mm. to get voted down by the Republican House. You know, the Senate passes something. I mean, all you're doing is you're 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 just jockeying for position yes. and yeah. you're trying to do something that gets media headlines. There's a lot of things that need to be done in our country. And, yeah. and I would hope that they would focus on, you know, immigration is a big issue. You know, uh, tax policy, of course, we have a tax mm-hmm. the policies in place, most likely will stay until 25. But that's a good one. So the, 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 the Trump era tax policies, you know, reduced corporate rates, reduced right. personal rates, those are intended to sunset in 2025. Right. And there was some concern that, that Biden might take action to try and, or the Congress might take action prior to that to limit those. And it looks right. like that very likely wouldn't happen with a, a Republican so. controlled house. Right. And so the question would just be after the 2024 election, whoever controls what that would probably then deal with whether those are renewed, extended, adjusted. So it might be something that gets kicked beyond Biden's. Yeah. And I think the, I mean, obviously uh, Biden is entering into agreements for climate change and what's the economic impact mm-hmm. of that. We have to look mm-hmm. at that. And is that going to be much more, uh, burdensome on American public than it is right now. China may or may not participate in that, and their their pollutants are greater than America and Europe and India combined. Mm. So the question is, is that do we take all the hit? How is that going to be implemented? Right. Um, there's no question we're going to have environmental issues that are going to be somewhere in the tax ramification revenue side of it. Yeah. Uh, because- yeah. Either direct taxes or even you know, hidden indirect taxes on it on right. in businesses to say you right. have to, to put in these, you know, EPA related protocols, therefore to minimize your profitability. Yeah, there'll be there'll be an impact on that. And I wonder how big that will be in the next election cycle. Um, it, it kind of depends where we get to. Yeah. And I, I don't again, I think it comes down to how much pain is going to be felt in every household. If mm. unemployment really starts to rise and taxes uh, don't give relief or we don't see a, we see a shrinking economy, not an expanding economy. Uh, 2024 could see a change all the way across the board. Oh, man. I mean, especially if we have the next two years of increasing unemployment, suppressed markets, and then we have a, you know, a strong leading Republican coming into the White House at the same time that we are getting out of um, the slum. That, that could be just be an interesting dynamic for the market. Yeah. I mean, what I would like to see is a leadership that understands both sides of the issues and be able to bring them together and govern mm. in a, a more emphatic way to what's best for America. 
in my dreaming. Oh, right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Someone who set aside the politics and said, "Hey, let's let's get everyone on board." Let's and that's. I mean, you know, going back to you know, Machiavelli and some of the other you know authors that say when they have an outside threat, you know, America pulls together. Right. And you're right or left. It doesn't matter. We're Americans. Let's move forward. Um, but wouldn't it be great in peacetime? <laughs> wouldn't it be great in normal politics to say, right. hey, we're all Americans. Let's band together. Let's move our economy forward. Let's move some of these um, social items forward. Yeah, and I mean, like, like for example, immigration, we have, um, you know, we have labor issues in some very key areas of the industry. I think we should look at our immigration policy to see how we can reinforce yeah. those particular businesses that need skills at certain levels. It seems like there's kind of a blanket push. No, yes. we don't want anybody coming in. Yeah. And I and I again, we still are a nation of immigrants, and I think we have to be really careful about who we, so to speak, designate it as a bad person versus that person's yeah. a good person, right? Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of issues. I mean, that's immigration is a great one. There are solutions out there, right? right? There are ways that we could improve our country um, and go from what it is currently, which doesn't seem to be the best system, to something that is great. But our ability to get from one to the other. Politically, mm -hmm. I I don't know that we have the ability to do that. You know, right. to to let the you know some of the best ideas and minds as a real solution, not just a politically um, you know virtue signaling, you know, but but a real solution. Yeah. So every two years we have this hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that everything's going to change. Hey, you know, and I'm optimistic, so I keep having this hope that yeah. we're going to make it. That there, um, there will be somebody that will be mature, that will have the wisdom to be able to carry our country forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a system that's very interesting. And, and the older I get, the more I look at it. I'm surprised we get anything done. Yeah, we even said earlier the checks and balances of, you know, the Congress versus the executive branch versus the ju judicial. I mean, Biden doesn't have the ability to pass a lot of these things unilaterally. So we kind of handcuff ourselves until we can all agree. And right. man, is it hard for us to agree? And maybe and maybe that's what that's what the lesson is, is that our system works that way. So one never really does get the overall advantage, no matter how, how what you think of the mm. of the other party, so to speak. Uh, you're always dealing with uh, checks and balances all the way through it. Sure. Well, if you've missed any part of this uh, episode, feel free to go on our website. It's retirementunlimited.com. You can find uh, past episodes. You can use the contact button and send us. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss, you can send it to us through that. You can also call our office. It's 951-684-7011.